No matter what else is going on in the world, we can always count on the four seasons that will progress as usual every year from the one season to the other. The same concept holds true in business. There are four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter that all businesses cycle through. Each season will run for a period, but the rotation throughout all four is unavoidable. I would like to share with you today a little bit of insight and a little bit of knowledge that I have acquired through reading all the different articles that I spend time to familiarize myself as to how my business is actually just a normal business. I think as honeys, we can very easily forget that we run a normal business. And by reading a lot of articles, I always sit with a note pen next to me and I write down the key principles or the key points and then I translate them and what they would look like in my business. I always say I honeyfy them. So today this presentation will be slightly different as to what we usually do. You will definitely have to take your notepad out as I have not outlined in my presentation all the notes. You would have to make notes as they come up uh, because I believe one of the most important parts is that we need to take responsibility for our own business and we need to treat it as such. I think a lot of people, um, specifically in our business, make a lot of wrong decisions because they do not understand that their business, even though it's a direct selling business, it is their own business, but that it still runs on normal business principles, which also means that we have to adhere to the cycles. I don't know if you ever try to get yourself out of winter. You can't because you don't have any control over it. You have to wait until the season change. And I think that is the key part that I want to uh, share with you today. Let's go back to farming. So in farming, spring would be when you would sow seeds and plants will begin to grow. Summertime is a time of rapid growth when healthy crops takes off and everything is in bloom. Autumn is then a mark by abundance when you have harvest, you, crop, or you store your crops, and finally, winter is slow. It is the quiet season where you live off the harvest you have worked so hard to cultivate until spring comes again. To build successful businesses, you have to learn to run your business according to the season that it's in. If you treat all seasons equally, you'll get to a point where you realize that actually you are misunderstanding your business. And usually when you misunderstand what goes on in your business, that is when you start making a lot of wrong choices. If you treat all your seasons equally, you will be unprepared for when the other season inevitably arrives. It is like running on a treadmill, losing your concentration, concentration and then you have to paddle and really run to catch up again. I can remember how we felt the effects of the 2008-2009 recession. Some businesses got hit hard that winter because that's when we entered into a winter season. But about two seasons later, we were all able to recover our financial footing. Others either went bush and hadn't fully recovered before the COVID pandemic knocked them down again. Each of the four seasons of business has benefits and drawbacks, and we need to learn how to develop a strategy for each one so that we can prepare for the challenges, but also take advantage of the opportunities. Gary Gustav says in his podcast, Spring Has Sprung, and he says, well, the signs of life and growth are everywhere in the natural world. We may not be experiencing the same signals in our own businesses. And that warrants asking ourselves a question. What season of business am I in? Businesses, like life, he says, is cyclical. And as owners, we must navigate all four seasons and stages with confidence, no matter what season we are in. It shall soon pass into another. We may stay in seas certain seasons longer than others, but eventually everything will shift and move forward. Now, this is incredibly useful to remember, particularly when things feel stagnant or stuck. Instead of fighting against it, 
what if we can work its rhythms and knows what the gifts are and that we can draw from them no matter what season we are in to prepare us for whatever season will follow. Conversely, if we are in a season of prosperity and busyness, we may feel gratitude for the success we experience, but we might be a little bit tired and the idea of keeping up the pace can be quite overwhelming. Knowing that another slower season is likely upon us will give us the stamina to ride out the busy season until once again we can rest and restore. Here's what's important. Our business seasons might not line up with natural seasons, nor with the seasons of our peers and our mentors. The people around us might be reaping the harvest of fall while we are still nose in the grindstone doing hard work in springtime. Our season of rest might take longer than our fellow business owners. If we are creating something entirely new, we might be spending more time in the spring before it begins to bloom in summer. We cannot force the next season. It comes when it's ready to shift into it. And trying to rush it not only robs us of the learning and the gifts of the season we are in, but it will also add a whole lot of stress and uncertainty that compounds feeling stuck in the season that we are in. And I think this is one of the most important things that I want you to grasp right now. The season you are in might be different to that of your team. Um, when I say your team, as a team leader, your fellow team leaders around you will be in different seasons. You might be in a different season from your mother team leader, and you need to be very aware of it. Let's talk about spring. After a difficult economic winter stretching throughout most of 2020 and into 2021, we are entering a new spring. So I'm reading now from an article that was published um, from a Forbes magazine um, in August of this year. Now, it's a, it's a current um, publication. They say many companies have gone out of business or into debt. Others received government assistance and remain afloat and need to recapitalize very quickly. Only the strongest have survived, and the marketplace is much thinner than it was a year or two ago. Spring is the beginning of a new economic cycle. If you survive the winter and have managed to maintain some cash reserves, now is the ideal time to scale your business. And what he means by scaling your business is he, he, he asks the question, what is your roadmap for growth? Consider expanding your team. Spring is often an excellent time to hire because now more people are unemployed or looking for new opportunities. And you might have a good chance of recruiting good talent without paying top dollar. Because spring is a season of planting new life, be sure that you are planting the right seeds. This is where clear, focused plan will serve you the best. Yes, you've got the energy, the vitality, all of that is in your favor. But if you simply throw the seeds without a clear vision for what you are planting long term, you will find yourself working much harder. Spring is a season of possibility, of ideas and of action. You've got a renewed sense of energy and drive, so use it well over the coming months. Consider doing a 90-day sprint where, all you, where you go all in for short bursts of focused work to bring a new project to life. This is the time to create and make, to capitalize on the plans that you've already mapped out. Create a space to make your big ideas happen. And what I would like to maybe point out for you in this point is each one of us runs this little marathon differently than the other. Some of us are marathon runners, which means you can go into a plan and you can steadily keep at your plan constantly without falling away. I know many people in our business and they are very successful. Then there are the other athletes. They are the sprinters. Now, sprinters I would define as people that have got a great plan, put it into action, but can't keep the momentum going, take a break, and two weeks later, launch a new plan or launch a new strategy. Now, I can tell you today that neither one of the two is better than the other. It is about knowing which runner you are. Are you the sprinter or are you the marathon runner? 
For instance, myself, I am a sprinter. I can hit a new plan. I can take it full out. But I usually know by two weeks later, I've lost my steam. And in the past, that used to bring a lot of judgment over me because I felt like I failed. I would measure myself against the marathon runners. And I always felt that um, I have not done right in doing a sprint and then getting to a stop. Now I've learned to know that in those periods that I run out of breath, it's actually quite good. Because after I take maybe a two-week break, doesn't really matter what your break is, and don't measure yours against mine. This is just my rhythm. I know that I'm good to run a good two-week sprint again. So what will we focus on in spring things? Things like recruiting, in markets, innovative incentive, team meetings with a twist. If your business is into spring right now, um, you want to go out there and be as pretty as a fruit tree would be. Come with possibility, come with innovation, come with new ideas and just bloom. Bloom there where you are planted. And then we get summer. Summer is the best time to maximize your revenue. The old saying is, make hay while the sun shines. That is your summer motto. The market is strong, which means you've got a few more competitors to maybe keep your eye on, but people are spending money again. Invest into your business growth in the season. Nurture the seeds you have planted in spring and focus on making and saving money for the future. Look at different avenues for expansion, whether you are continuing to hire or maybe exploring new acquisitions. Business is in full bloom and finally, finally not flourishing in your summer season. You would be watching the small seeds of growth growing up before your eyes. Inside our business, it will always be growing and thriving. And you would be feeling great and proud of your efforts. And why you are likely to be slowing your pace, maybe just slightly then in the spring, you will still be working hard and you will definitely bring a number of your goals into completion. Summer is the time to nurture, to tend, the growth and if you really want to continue to thrive you will not allow your success to die on the vine of unwanted pests or rough weather don't relax your guard in summertime if you were a farmer you would be walking your fields early in the morning to see if on the outskirts there is not something that is growing on those on those crops right outside on the perimeter a farmer is very wake up in summer times, even though his crop might be growing and he might be relaxing a little bit. So it's not his tempo um, as much that will bring the difference, but his alertness. And a lot of time we make the mistake to think that summer means holiday time. Summer might not always mean holiday sun. It means that you need to walk your perimeters and know what is going on in your business. So in summertime, it's about watering. It's about light and it's attention and love. And every now and then a healthy deadheading session or two will do the job. So keep watering, keep tending, keep nurturing. Your summer season is also the perfect time to tend to relationships and to form new connections. People are out and about and tend to have more time to spend with each other. Get out of the house. Meet, meet people in real life. Follow up. These connections will be your livelihood when summer and fall turn to winter and things quiet down. And I believe for people that have not got out of isolation, they got so comfortable on the inside of the house, on the inside of the offices, behind their screens, that those who failed to get out into the summer are the ones that are now struggling because they have not got new relationships to build their business on. In Honey, I believe that summer things would be training your teams on all levels and even making your training a little bit on a deeper level. Always know that you have got different seasoned people in your team, whether they are sales consultants, whether they are style stations, or whether they are team leaders. So maybe your seasoned style station who's been here for the third year, maybe don't want to be invited to an induction training, 
but you might want to invite her to one of your team leader trainings to give her that little bit of a deeper sense of meaning. And I believe those are the kind of training sessions where we can um, influence them to level up. Maybe in your summertime, it would be a good idea to develop into your neighboring town. Um, maybe get some help in your business. Maybe host a butterfly breakaway. If you've ever looked at how anybody else are hosting those, maybe just team up, ask for an agenda, ask for an idea and host your own. There's so many amazing ways that you can make sure that summer in your business is a good season. Address the challenging issues, but the most important thing is don't lose focus. You need to stay alert. So then we get to autumn. By autumn, your business is ideally well established and on solid ground. You are in your groove, you're still making good money, and you need to become more cautious about spending. Now concentrate on conserve, conserving as much cash, cash as possible, aiming to keep at least 10% of your turnover in liquid cash. You have to go into winter with cash reserves, a solid financial cushion will give you the breathing space to make decisions with a clear head when winter comes around. Fall is also the season for harvest. It's a time to reap the rewards of all your hard work and your focused commitment. You deserve it. In this season, feel things as close to easy as they can get. We are in the flow, our pipelines are full, a bank, our bank accounts feels nicely padded, our network is sitting up and paying close to attention to what we are up to. And we can't wait to get every morning, get up and get back to work. This is our moment to enjoy and celebrate all that we have created and brought to life. It can be very easy to gloss over our accomplishments as we set our sight into the future, but we shouldn't. Take the moment or two to acknowledge your efforts so that that can sustain us when winter comes. While you're riding in the season, remember that winter is still on its way. And how can you prepare now so that you can relish in winter and ra rather than resist it? Because winter is a good season. Winter is not a bad season. You often see winter as bad, and I believe it's because we have not prepared for that. But in autumn, it might be time to stash away some of those hard-earned mullahs so that your cash flow doesn't become an issue in the winter time. This might also mean following up on new connections that you made over the summer period and you can bring new clients and customers into your business. Aside from celebrating, fall can be a great time to invest back into your business. As you would enjoy the bounty that you've created over the spring and the summer times, maybe set a portion of your allocated income towards a business investment that could yield you a better return down the road. Or maybe you might just want to hire a coach, bring a new team member in, or maybe take a course or hone your skills. What I want to ask in autumn is what makes my business unique? Why is it that I still exist? Why is it that my company still exists? And then I want to say to you, it's because our company understands the cycle. I want to make sure I maintain my connections. I want to manage my spending versus my investing. And what is very important is I want to reward and celebrate. I think it's one of the most important things. We often watch a movie and we'll see that as they harvest it, there's a harvest festival. And the true meaning of a harvest festival is to say thanks for those people who have worked so hard in the previous seasons um, that we obviously have now seen as the areas or the seasons in which we really work very hard. So know what autumn is about and embrace it. And then it's winter things. If you have properly laid out the groundwork on the previous seasons, you are now well prepared to thrive in winter. You have saved your money, you've trimmed back on expenses, and you have braced your business for an economic downturn or maybe just a slower period. You will be prepared to make decisions that will define your next season to come in a stronger and a more secure way than ever before. You don't want to be caught with your storehouse empty or not having enough seed 
to put in the ground. Winter can sometimes be a particularly hard season to navigate because it runs contrary to all the expectations we set for growth and for big paydays and even big possibilities. When we're in winter, we might wonder if something is wrong with us or is it because we are just not motivated? We wonder if we have what it takes to keep going. We hope spring is just around the corner so that we can just feel the warm breeze of opportunity again. But winter has got real great gifts if we open ourselves up to it instead of trying to skip over it. Because like in nature, winter is a season of restoration and reflection. It's a time to take stock, maybe let go of stuff that is no longer serving us in our business or in our life. And finally, this is definitely what is true to me. It gives me time to contemplate my big ideas that I didn't have time for to really focus on in the busy season. It's time for preparation and it's knowing that the business of the busy season is just ahead. Now you might feel anxious or impatient or maybe you have got a case of FOMO as you watch the others in their more fruitful seasons and you long to be re reaping the rewards they have. It is natural to feel this way, but it won't make spring come any faster. Notice that any resistance that you have about where you and your business currently are will really be futile. You can rather embrace its current state and draw on the wisdom that it provides in this quieter and more contemplative season. If you've been through a rough business cycle, you will know immediately when spring hits. It will feel like you are running to catch a speeding train. So while you're in a winter season preparing for the speeding train to hit you, rest, reflect and restore. Reflect is very important because only when you've got time to be quiet, you can really take stock of what it is where your business are and where you want to go. Do an audit to determine what is working, what is not, where you want to go to and what things can take you there. Rest. Unless you are of a rare exception, entrepreneurs chronically struggle with rest, self-care and renewal. You know, we always feel that there are other things we could do or should be doing and I'm, I'm quite guilty of that. This is a season where you have time, so use it wisely. Sign up for an extra fitness class each week. Maybe spend some time with friends. Read those books that have been piled up against your decks. Write, explore, and daydream. And restore. As you prepare for spring, how can you restore the areas of your business that has not been to service to you? Maybe you can let other elements go or you can bring other, other elements in. Maybe you can fill some gaps by creating better workflows or systems. Can you identify any limiting beliefs that will impact your ability to move into spring? Now, winter things are like in our honey context. That will give us those smaller con conversations, our table of seven or your table of five. Small connections, um, really connecting to my people. Um, asking questions, what works, what's in, what is out. And the most important thing that you need to know is that in winter time, sowing seeds is the thing that you're going to start doing. Did you know, did you know that a farmer will buy all of the seeds in the beginning of winter in time for planting season? So winter season should never be um, misunderstood. It's not, it's not time to completely sit back and relax. And it's definitely not time to sell your farm in winter. Have you ever heard of it that a, that a farmer will sell its farm because he looks out in the morning with his coffee and his rusk in his hand and all he sees is dirt and it doesn't grow? No, because the farmer understands the season. Because if the farmer will sell its farm, do you believe it that the only other farms that he will be able to purchase is one that is connected to a season? He might move from the low felt to the high felt and he might think it's summer up there. But in the meantime, he does not understand the season that the farms in, in the low felt might be in. So no farmer sells his farm in the winter. No, 
He knows the system. He knows the cycles. He's got confidence in his farm because he has been taught from generation to generation on how to be a farmer. So I found these seven tips to survive the seasons. Um, manage your cash. Market all year around. I think it manage your cash. Can I just say this? It is easy when we've got a lot of money. And then what we do? We spend it all. And maybe it is time that we address this in our business. Market all year around. Marketing never stops. Collaborate with local businesses. Don't um, think that you're an island and you can work on your own. Whether you collaborate with local other businesses or other team leaders, collaborate. Grow your local market. It's always important to have a great local market before you have got a national market. Get your team ready and make the most of your off season. I see many people making wrong decisions just because they are not aware of the seasonal cycle of business. I see people running around seeking other opportunities just because they were not prepared. I see those who emptied out the warehouse and now they look blamefully to the winter fields. Do you know that a farmer never, and I mean never, speaks negative over his fields? Because he knows that even if all he sees is dirt, he knows the season and he was taught this by his father and his grandfather. And that brings me to the most important value of working with a mentor. Somebody who is seasonally trained and has gone through many seasons in business and can give you sound advice. I hope throughout this little session, you have heard something that you needed to hear. I compiled this from these three articles, from these three websites, and I believe that the information in here is as applicable to you as it was to every little business that this, these articles were written for. Um, you are welcome to send me any feedback on that. I would love to hear from you. This is goodbye from my side. And may the next season be around the corner. May you be filled with wisdom. But most of all, may you be prepared.